Hi, my name is Bill Lindsay. I'm Field Systems Architect for Wireless Sensor Network Products at Linear Technology. I'm going to talk about the Smart Mesh IP network products and specifically focus on the wide range of sensor applications that these network products can address with very straightforward network configuration choices. There are simple interfaces that allow your application to communicate how the network should behave. From that point, the network takes care of network management so you can focus on your application. In this video, we will examine how to use these interfaces to tailor network performance to meet your system requirements. In all these examples, the primary trade-off is speed versus power consumption. A Smart Mesh IP network is comprised of a Smart Mesh IP manager and a number of Smart Mesh IP moats. Each moat represents a place where your sensor application can send data across the network. The manager is the device that builds and maintains the network and also represents the place where sensor data is delivered and made available to your data collection application. Any one network can consist of up to 100 moats, such as the LTC 5800 IPM, and one network manager, such as the LTC 5800 IPR. In my setup, I will use a PC to communicate with a Smart Mesh IP manager or a moat using software tools I downloaded from Linear.com. For the examples in this video, we will consider the configuration choices for a 20 moat network that is two hops deep. By this, I mean that some of the moats can communicate directly to the manager over the air, and other moats must route their data through other moats. The factory default configuration of the network is an excellent choice for most monitoring applications. It assumes that all devices are powered similarly, for example, when all devices are battery powered. This is a good setup for sensor applications that will publish data in the range of once per minute to once per second. In this configuration, there are network resources available for moderate downstream communication from the host application down to individual sensors. When an individual moat is powered up, it joins the network. Part of that process involves the moat telling the manager exactly what the sensor application is going to do. This exchange is called a service request. In response to the service request, the manager lays in the necessary network bandwidth and tells the moat when that bandwidth is available. Using the temp monitor application in the SDK, I can see that all 20 of my moats are configured to send data once every 30 seconds. I can modify the service level by changing this value. I will set five of the moats to report every 10 seconds, and set five moats to report every five seconds, and set another five moats to report once per second. For all these changes, the network manager will lay in just the right network resources for the expected traffic. Every moat will receive enough resources to yield ultra-high data reliability, but not too much to waste energy and reduce battery life. The service request interface at the moat allows the network to flexibly support a wide range of sensor applications. Now let's look at how we evaluate power consumption. The vast majority of end users of wireless sensor networks care very much about battery life, and battery life is expected to be measured in years. You should evaluate power consumption in three steps. We provide a tool called the Smart Mesh Power and Performance Estimator to help predict the power consumption of moats in the network. Then, on the board provided with the evaluation kit, you can physically measure the power consumption of a moat and compare it to the prediction. Finally, you can compare the network health reports that are published by the moats and check those for accuracy. At the end of this three-step approach, you will have confidence that the moat health reports are accurate, so you won't ever have to do your own measurements and you will have a good idea how the Power and Performance Estimator enables you to estimate power consumption. The Power and Performance Estimator is an Excel spreadsheet that takes inputs from you and calculates the power consumption of your moats. Your inputs include network topology, data rates and packet size, supply voltage, and the packet success rate in the network. The outputs you receive include average current consumption, data latency, and network formation time. Some of these you might not know ahead of time, but that is one of the major values of this tool. It helps to illustrate what parameters are more important and which are less important. Please check the application notes on Linear.com for details on how to use this tool to do a sensitivity study about networks. Using the Power and Performance Estimator, I can see the cost in battery life of sending data at faster rates. 
As you would expect, when I set the data rate faster, I can see that moats will consume more energy. When I set the data rate slower, the same moats use less energy. The main point here is that it is the same network that always works at ultra high data reliability. We already have a great deal of flexibility to drive the network to higher speed or to lower power. If your sensor application reports data slowly, and if you rarely need to send commands downstream from the host to the moats, there are two ways to significantly decrease power consumption and increase battery life. These two approaches are turning off network advertising and reducing downstream communication. In my 20 moat network with the standard network configuration, the power and performance estimator tells me that my one hop moats will be consuming about 49 microamps and the two hop moats will be consuming about 32 microamps. If I turn off network advertising, the power consumption drops almost in half. The second thing I can do is turn down the speed of downstream communication. When I change the downstream frame size from 256 to 1024, power consumption drops again. With these two changes, my one hop moats dropped to about 25 microamps, and my two hop moats dropped to under 10 microamps, and the sensor data reporting is exactly the same. So these two techniques more than double battery life. Once you are down below 10 microamps, you can truly start to think about 10 year battery life on a small battery. You can make these changes and measure them on a real network by using API Explorer. Here's the command to turn off advertising. Be careful because when advertising is off, no new moats can join. If you want a new moat to join, or if a moat gets lost, your host application should turn advertising back on. Here's the command where I turn the downstream frame mode from fast to normal. The result is that when in this mode, the speed of downstream communication slows down. If you want to speed things back up, you can turn that downstream bandwidth back on by returning the frame mode to fast. It takes a few minutes to switch back and forth, so this is not something your host application can do frequently. What if your sensors include a mix of hardware? What if some of the moats are line powered and the rest are battery powered? There is another very simple configuration option that allows you to tell the network about this. If you know there will be enough line powered devices to build a good mesh network, then you can turn off routing at all the battery powered moats. What this means is that when the moat joins, it will inform the network that it cannot afford to be a parent in the mesh. The manager will make sure those moats never advertise and will never route data from other moats. They will always be leaf nodes. This guarantees that those moats will have the lowest possible power consumption and that all these non-routing moats will have similar current consumption. I can make this configuration setting on a moat through API Explorer. I use the set parameter command to set routing mode to true. You can watch these moats join and see that they are never parents in the mesh. If I turn off routing on half of my 20 moat network, the average power consumption of the routers stays about the same, but all the battery powered leaf nodes drop down to about nine microamps. This might not seem essential, but now you can see that you can leave advertising on all the time and it never impacts the leaf nodes. The last configuration setting we'll discuss is backbone mode. This is the configuration setting you use if all the routing moats are line powered, and if you want data latency to be fast, like for alarm messages. We need to make two changes. First, we need to set the routing moats to the max value power source. Second, we have to set up the backbone at the manager. This network mode tells the manager to lay in extra bandwidth that all moats will share and allows data to be sent at lower network latency. Returning to our previous example, the data from these two hop leaf nodes will take about 1.5 seconds on average for delivery. But if you run the same network with the backbone on with size equal to one slot, there will be a significant reduction in data latency. Now the data reports from these leaf nodes takes 50 milliseconds on average to deliver but leaf node power consumption remains at nine microamps and the routers now consume over 900 microamps. 
Such a configuration allows a customer application to take advantage of powered nodes to deliver very low latency and extremely long battery life for the leaf node sensors. To use the backbone in my network, I need to first set every one of the routing moats to the maximum power setting. This tells the manager that the moat should be considered line powered. I use the manager CLI to set the backbone size to one and the backbone mode to one. In order for any backbone change to take effect, I need to restart the network and have it reform with another CLI command. You cannot turn the backbone on and off while the network is running. When the moats all rejoin, I can use Stargazer to confirm that the average latency is reduced. We've now reviewed several ways to interact with your Smart Mesh IP network to configure it for optimum performance. Smart Mesh IP networks contain simple interfaces to allow users to configure networks to a wide array of performance targets. This configurability allows you to use Smart Mesh IP as a wireless network platform suitable for multiple end user applications. With the same moats and managers, you can build highly unique networks with just a few simple configuration settings. Tools to assist you are provided by Linear Technology at no cost. Please visit linear.com for more information. Thank you for watching. Thank you.